News All Evening. The Federal Emergency Management Agency blames the collapse of the Twin Towers on the subsequent fire. The House Science Committee held a hearing today focusing on the results of an investigation by FEMA and American Society of Civil Engineers. The report shows intense heat from the fire brought down Towers 1 and 2, not the sheer impact of the planes. The other buildings, except for seven, stood for as long as they did because the support columns that were able to carry the load. FEMA says that's one of the keys to avoiding future collapses. Also, better fireproofing and emergency exits, as well as training of firefighters. But the agency concluded it may never be possible to build a structure that would survive such a catastrophic event. The towers survived the impacts. It was the fire in addition to this very severe impact that finally brought the towers down. For the families of those lost, today's report offers little consolation and leaves many questions unanswered. And sadly, because of the early missteps in the investigation, some of the most vexing questions may never be unraveled. To aid in future building disaster investigations, Congressman Weiner is introducing legislation to provide specific guidelines. It would make the National Institute of Standards and Technology the lead agency. NIST has already been given $16 million to implement a response plan, including a more thorough investigation of the collapse of buildings 1, 2, and 7. That information would be used for building fire codes and in engineering practices. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. The war against al-Qaeda terrorists began, of course, after the September 11th attack on America, including destruction of the World Trade Center. Engineers have just concluded a study of how and why the Twin Towers collapsed, and they say it's a tribute to their design that they remained standing as long as they did, the towers. CBS's Nika Brzezinski has more about this. There was damage to the water supply system. The nation's the top civil engineers told a congressional committee today that the impact of the two jumbo jets alone wasn't what ultimately destroyed the World Trade Center towers. It was the fire that brought them down because this type of structure uh, either comes down immediately or doesn't come down at all. <laughs> Their report concluded that the thousands of pounds of jet fuel ignited a massive fire fed by office furniture and paper. The fireproofing, which was sprayed on to the metal beams and floor trusses, was blown away in the crash, leaving the steel exposed to 2,000 degree heat. The experts made a list of recommendations designed to minimize loss of life in the event of another terror attack. They include stronger adhesive for fireproofing on steel beams, enhanced sprinkler systems, and also so-called hardened stairwells built throughout the building to withstand impact and fire. This is an American disgrace. For Sally Reagenhard, the engineer study is not enough. She wants complete federal control over the investigation. We must have that legacy so that these beautiful, wonderful, People will not have died in vain. This is his graduation picture. Regenhard lost her son Christian, a firefighter, in one of the towers. Since then, she has lobbied for major changes in how the nation builds skyscrapers. They were betrayed by a system that allows buildings of any size, of any height, to be constructed and let the fire service worry about how to save human life. Engineers concluded the towers stood up long enough for thousands to escape. And though fire safety improvements could be made for future buildings, ultimately, little could be done to prepare for the unimaginable. Mika Brzezinski, CBS News, New York. NBC4, the Tri-State News Channel. And now, Chuck Scarborough, Sue Simmons, Janice Huff, and Len Berman. This is News Channel 4 at 11. Well, tomorrow, Congress will receive a special federal report on the specific reasons for the collapse of the Twin Trade Towers. It might teach us valuable lessons for the future. Tiwa Chang is live near Ground Zero with a preview of that report. Tiwa? Well, Sue, that report will conclude what turned the Twin Towers into ground zero was not just the impact of the plane or even the jet fuel, but the fire that resulted after that that melted the steel. 
and there are lessons to be learned from that. The Twin Towers might have stayed up longer if they had better fireproofing on the steel support beams. The stairways were better protected and the steel structural joints were stronger. So concludes a special investigation by FEMA and the American Society of Civil Engineers. But the study will also conclude that because the Twin Towers were well designed, many people had more time to escape. The initial impact did not knock down the Twin Towers. A conclusion supported by a Columbia professor last month when results of the study first leaked out. Had they uh, not been able to withstand that impact, they would have collapsed very, very shortly after the, the impact. The teams of civil engineers studied the twisted steel beams in a salvage yard near Newark, the microscopic evidence of the steel, and video of the collapse of the Twin Towers. Tonight on PBS, the NOVA program had file video when the towers were built some 30 years ago to show they had a core of steel, then empty space, and then a steel skeleton. When the first plane hit the North Tower, it reached the inner core. The second jet did not reach the core of the South Tower, but struck a lower floor, leaving a heavier top to support. In both cases, the impact literally knocked off the foam fireproofing on the steel beams and destroyed the sprinkler systems. The jet fuel ignited the building contents, carpets, desks, computers. The temperature then reached 2,000 degrees and melted the steel, specifically because the steel joints were too light. There was no trade-off of safety for economy in construction. I would tend to think that uh, they were not as successful as they could have been. Now, some families of firefighters who died at the uh, World Trade Center criticized the report, saying it's not thorough enough. But one member of the, for example, they said there were not enough steel beams checked. But one member of the study said we, in fact, checked thousands of steel beams from the Trade Center. Reporting live from Ground Zero, T.R. Chang, News Channel 4. And the work. This is nonstop news. Families of the victims went to Washington looking for answers about why the Twin Towers fell. But as New York Point's Jay Dow tells us, there are still many questions standing. If nothing else, Wednesday's House subcommittee hearing on why the Twin Towers collapsed produced a sobering realization that eight months after the attacks, there's still no clear answer. I was hoping after eight months of a study uh, that there would be uh, far more specific recommendations, uh, and I, I haven't heard that today, and I'm disappointed about that. John Ashton and other family members affected by 9-11 made the trip from New York City, only they say to hear what they already knew, that a report undertaken by FEMA and the American Society of Civil Engineers did not go far enough to clearly identify factors that contributed to the collapse, and what's worse, critics say, didn't even have the subpoena power to obtain the materials needed to produce a thorough set of findings. Representative Anthony Weiner was visibly frustrated with the study's lack of solid conclusions. Uh, uh, Dr. Corley, that's intuitive. It's intuitive that no one modeled for this, but I'm asking you a different question. Now that you've gone in and looked after the fact, is it a conclusion that you can draw at this point that, the, that for the purposes of getting people out of those buildings, the stairwells were not sufficiently separated? But the report did clearly identify several problem areas, namely the close proximity of the emergency stairwells in the towers and the effectiveness of foam fireproofing sprayed on the steel skeleton during the original construction, fireproofing that was seemingly blown off by the jet's impact. The bodies that, that survived intact, although they indeed died, were there because of their firefighting equipment and protection. The other bodies didn't survive intact. So I should think that some of that can be relayed to the buildings. We need to relate the fireproofing to the fire load. If the loads are increased in an area, then we need to apply appropriate fireproofing in that area. And finally, egress or exiting uh, with impact needs to be reviewed. Both members of the subcommittee and family members acknowledge an intense desire to attain a clear focus for the next stage of the investigation. And in a proposal that would take the lead away from FEMA, the National Institute of Standards and Technology believes it has the answer, and more importantly, the resources to do so. But results don't come cheap.
NIST has already asked for $16 million in initial funding. In the nation's capital, J. Dow, New York.